Some of you may remember back to Wednesday when I did the live show addressing the issues that uh, long ago existed and still exist actually uh, from the New Bethany Girls Home and Mac Ford, the abuse that uh, he instituted on many young ladies and uh, boys as well. Shortly after the show, on the next show, Boiler Room Radio uh, with Jim Funky, a young lady called in uh, who had been abused there and I'm going to go in a moment um, and play that I think it's about an 18 minute audio testimony of the abuse if the information that I didn't share with you guys on that show Wednesday or if that wasn't enough to get you on your feet and doing something to help these ladies and, and these young men uh, then I don't know what will but uh, first I want to give Jim a, a, a big shout out and thank you for first of all his kind words to me in his patience with this uh, caller and giving her the same voice that I would have allowed her. It's it's humbling uh, the kind of uh, host uh, that are at UCY. So for all of you, go over there. I'll link you to uh, Jim's Facebook that you can see in front of you. I'll uh, link you to his radio show. And again, Jim, thank you very much. Uh, for everybody else, please listen to Amy's story. 60 area code, you're live on the air. Go ahead. Hi. Hello. Who's this? Hi. I just saw, I was looking online and I saw you were doing a story on Mac 4. Um, must have the wrong show. The New, the new Bethany. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was Kevin's show. That's the hour before mine. Sorry, sweetie. Okay. This is okay, it's already done. Yeah. But if you want to talk about okay, it. Okay, well, I was. Well, no, I just, I was, um, I was, a, I'm a survivor of New Bethany. Are you really? And I can just say that it was complete fucking hell. And I have boxes and boxes of letters. I was abused by him. I was hit with wood sticks every day. Um, yeah, I have pictures. I've got, I mean, it was just torture. Do, do you want to contact Kevin? And let him know your Yeah, story? no, I'd love to because, like I said, I have, and I'm still, you know, I, I mean, I suffer. It's, what happened to me there, like, affected me my whole life. Oh, I can like, imagine. I can't trust anybody. I can't trust men. I can't, I mean, it's just, I've never been the same since I left there. My heart goes out to you. I mean, it was terrible. You can get a hold of him. At, you can email him, uh, Kevin at masterofmanythings.com. And, uh. Kevin. Uh, what? Master of Many Things mm -hmm. com. That's his okay. website, and uh, you know you can go to his website, uh, Master Many Things com, and I'm sure that there's a, uh, you know, several other people that are in the same position that you are that you'll be able to get in contact with, and you can drop Kevin yeah. your story and let him know, and I'm I guarantee you that he will give you time out of his life to get your story okay. aired. Get it out there and let. And if you want to talk about it now, girl, I'm going to go ahead and open the floor to you, and let you get. You know, well, I mean, it was just it was terrible. I mean, it was terrible. Like I can remember a day. I mean, I can. How long I ago mean, was it that you were the, there? I was there when I was. Okay, I'm 43 now, and I was there when I was seven, 16. I was there for my 16th birthday. Um, oh man. I got my parents actually because I had gotten. Um, I was actually taken um, by some black people, and they considered it unsafe for me to be, um, I was kidnapped, basically. Mm -hmm. And then my parents thought that this was, like, this great school. They heard from people that it was, you know, something that, like, would be, you know, like, I mean, you see those things for kids. Just like a, it was like a horse camp, all this well, once you run inside their gates and there is metal, I mean, they had barbed wire, and, but once you were in and once we got in there and then my parents kind of saw what was going on, legally they weren't allowed to take me out, take me out after that. Are you kidding me? And 
No, until the door was off behind me. My parents wanted to take me home. They legally couldn't for a year. They stripped me of all my stuff. They stripped me of all my clothes. They took all my jewelry. They took me upstairs and gave me a shower naked in front of all these people. I was forced to scrub the floors with toothbrushes. I was hit with a wood paddle that they put in the microwave and got it hot, a piece of wood, and they would dip it in water and stick it in the microwave and they'd just beat you with it. You weren't allowed to have phone calls with your parents. Um, you can't write letters. If you got, if you wrote letters that said anything like, oh, this place is terrible, you were beaten. Um, I mean, it's hell. It's hell. Hell. <laughs> I had friends that committed suicide when they left. Um, I went through, like, a lot of physical stuff when I got out of there through counseling and I mean, it was just terrible. How did you finally get out? Um, my parents finally, after a year, came and they were able to come and get me. But legally, they forced you to stay there a year. They forced you to stay there a year? Yeah. They don't want to, they won't let you out. They won't even let, like, and, and the hard thing is, is that when you're sitting there no. talking to your family on the phone, they are sitting like Mac Ford. His wife, um, there's a lady, called, her name was Miss Shipman. They would all sit there and make sure you didn't say anything wrong to your parents at all. And so in your parents' eyes, everything was going great. So I can, you know, like, oh, and if you started to say anything, they would turn the, like you were on speakerphone. And you were allowed to call your parents once a month for a year. Unbelievable. I mean, and all I did was want to go home, and it was just terrible. Like, my daughter just went upstairs because she, she's just hurt because she knows what I went through. And like I said, I, my parents knew that I came across a whole box of letters that they wrote me when I was in there. And I have letters and letters and stuff from Matt Ford. And, I mean, it was just terrible. And like I said, it still affects me to this day. I think it always will because like, I was a freak. <laughs> I'm actually I'm trying to uh, Skype with Kevin right now and see if I can get him on. I don't know if he's still got his Skype turned on, though. Uh, see if I can get him to join the call. And maybe yeah, and then you. girls were like, they had, Mac Ford had like, if you, if girls were trying to run, he actually dug holes outside of the barbed wire fences. So the girls tried to run, they would fall down into these holes and they would go get them. <laughs> like punchy like pits. Like deep holes. Yeah, like a punchy <laughs> pit to trap yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you were forced to eat, you were forced to, I mean, everything was like, you couldn't cut your hair, you couldn't wear makeup, you couldn't, um, they're upstairs in that top left of the closet. Um... I mean, it was just you were forced to go to church. You were forced to memorize scriptures. And if you did it, you got beat. Um, there was another lady, Lori Maynard. Um, she was the one that used to sit in on the beating when you got beat. Um, and like I said, the hardest thing was that, like, you'd call your parents and you'd sit there and want to tell them that you want to come home and you don't want to be here anymore, and they would just hang up and say, oh, she, you know. I mean, they were so blinding to people. It, like, it's the thing that makes me mad. Yeah, it makes you wonder how they got away with it for so long. Because they were using religion. And in their eyes, it was like, you know, I mean, it was okay. I mean, like, what they were doing was fine, and they looked at it like it was, you know, God was the one, like, I don't know. Yeah, and I even have, I'm looking at a letter right now. New Bethany School, Route 2, Box 222, Arcadia, Louisiana, 710101. <laughs> I mean, I have a whole box of letters I'm sitting here looking at that I was, I mean, I was just torched, and I saw this on Facebook that he was doing that, and I was like, I can't even believe that people are talking about this. Do you, do you know of any other survivors? Of this place? I mean, have you kept um, in touch with anyone that you were locked up with? There's a couple. No, because two of it, like I said, two of the girls that I was 
would have committed suicide. Um, oh my God. One girl was Stephanie, and she didn't want to like become a Christian, and so they told her she was a devil, and they told her that she was. Yeah, like there's. I'm showing my daughter some of these pictures of me when I was there. Yeah, I have a, I have a picture right here of him and his, Mac Ford's truck and then the building behind it. But yeah, you weren't. I mean, it was terrible. Have, uh, have you ever thought about filing a class action suit? Or oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I mean, if I could, I just like I said, you just kind of. That's what Kevin was talking about. He was, you know, he was kind of throwing it out there. If there was anybody that had a legal background that was willing to help anybody, you know, any of you survivors to to get some justice served. Yeah, um, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Really? Because, like I said, I mean... Because this needs to be, you know, this needs to be headline news on CNN, on Fox. Yeah, I on. believe it. And I I know that when I left there, the Donahue, do you remember Donahue? He had a show on at once. Yeah. Because they were trying to shut New Bethany down. But then I don't think they ever got to... Um, you know, he's still out there, and he's still active and vocal. He doesn't have a show anymore. Yeah, I... But she might try to get hold of him. Have, because I know he's still Who? got a lot of Donahue, Phil Donahue. I know he's really? still out there and got a lot of clout uh, really? with some of the with some of the network people. You might be able to find him on Twitter or Facebook or. Really. Yeah, he might be interested be in cool. digging up that can of worms again. Yeah. Because he's one of those people that didn't really give a shit when anybody said about him. You know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like I guess I'm just sitting here looking. I mean, it's. Silly. Some of the stuff that they did. You know, I, uh, it's it, it encourages me that you've got this much strength that you can come out and talk about it now, just openly. You know. Well, I mean, it's just like I I talk about it sometimes, but I mean, sometimes like like even my parents didn't really believe for a while that it, until I showed them letters and showed them books and stuff like that, that people have, like, I've seen it, how much Mac Ford totally did this to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go to a, I mean, I'm 43, and I got a, you know, daughter now, but, like I said, for, I mean, I think even till this day, it's, it torments me all the time. I couldn't even go, like, out on a date, like, and not be able to, Trust somebody that I wouldn't. That's how mentally messed up it was. Like that, I couldn't even go anywhere because I always thought that I would be like stuck somewhere for a year and never see my parents again. Or like I remember I went on a date once and he was like, "Well, let's go for a drive. I'll take it." I was like, "I can't because I'm afraid you'll never bring me home." And that's how much like, and that's how I think a lot of people probably it's just you. You're embedded with this. I mean, you were you were. It's torture, is what it is. It's yeah, they gave torture. me medications. They gave me medications to stop my period. They overdosed you with antibiotics, so you don't have to go to the doctor, which I still suffer for now. I mean, it's just like I guess lately I've just been like, yeah, seeing right. stuff online and survivors of New Bethany and, and like I said we just moved and I found this whole box of letters and Are you still in Louisiana? Oh no, no. I'm in Washington. Oh are you? Okay. Washington yeah. State or D C? Yes. Yeah. Washington, Washington State. State. Wow. Watch out for the Fukushima um, radiation. But I just have I mean I just have I have so much, like so many letters and I think, uh, my, and my parents wanted to take me home. Like, I see a letter right now, and it says, Mom and I do wish you were here. And there was nothing, I mean, did, did they try to legally come and get you? Did they, did, they try to, did they try to legally come and get you? Did they try to go to the sheriff? Did they try they to... Asked, they asked, but they said they couldn't. And it says, like, my dad, I'm seeing one postcard that he sent me because they were getting frustrated because I wouldn't tell him what was going on and so they wrote me a postcard and said please write please do try to tell us a little bit of your activities in your letters 
Yeah, they and were censoring about any your letters. Pro- and more about any problems you are having. But they were censoring your letters, right? Oh, yeah, they went through all it, yeah. Yeah. All your letters. Gestapo. Type. Anything that said that your parents were coming to get you, they took. Anything that you wrote that said that you couldn't. Yeah. No, I know, my daughter's in tears right now because she just knows kind of what it said to me. Well, I'm sure if you email Kevin at his website, email Kevin okay. at masteromanythings.com and let okay. him know who you are, let him know what you went through and that you're a survivor, he will definitely, because his, I mean, this is one of his pet peeves. This story right here really gets his blood pumping. And, uh, oh, I got a story. I can tell him stories and stories and stories and stories. I mean, I'm sure he'll everything from girls that used to walk around with you and watch you and you couldn't do it like towels you had to put towels up and you weren't allowed to like for female problems you had to use towels um like i said i was forced to to scrub all the hallways with toothbrushes that's what the new girls did um they bathed you in self and blue when you got there um i mean it was it was Terrible. It's just it, it's mind boggling that that can happen in this country, and people. Don't yeah, really, it is. it is. It is. It really. I mean, it is. It's sad because I, you know, the one thing I can remember is like every day just sitting there saying, "I gotta get out of here. I gotta get home because I can't." Like, but there was no way. Like, there's no way you can get around it with him. Yeah, yeah there's girls that are have hair down to like their weight, like butt. Like parents left them there, and Max Ford like told them that their daughters were never going to be nothing, and just to leave them there, and they did. That's unbelievable. And I was lucky to get out because they didn't. I was almost like Max Ford wanted to keep me there, and I was like, I just, I don't even know. I mean, I don't really recall, remember exactly like how I told my parents, but I think I just finally must have had like a second of word that I could tell them that you have to come. Like, I can't, you know, like, I'm being tortured. This isn't what you think it is. How long ago has this place been closed? Um, I think quite a few years. I think he still lives there, though. Because I know I saw online that there was a group of girls that went back. Um, To confront him? Yeah, and I guess he came to the gate. Um, there's like, if you look up survivors of New Bethany, you can, it might be on there, but I have a, yeah. And nothing ever came of it though, huh? Did they take reporters or anything or? I don't think they did and they could, they, he had all this, he, he can't, he approached him in a golf cart, I remember, and he had a camera and was taking pictures. Like I, there was a picture of him in a golf cart taking a picture. And I suppose that the sheriff's department's got his back. Probably. Because evidently they look the other way, right? I mean, all the stories of the torture and violations and rapes and everything that's gone on there is out Mm -hmm. in the public now. I mean, it's out in the public now. And Kevin was was saying this, too, on his show. So Mm -hmm. anybody in law enforcement that has any whiff of of any of this going on, to not go down there and arrest that man right now, this, this minute, yeah, that's that's just that's that's shirking your responsibility to the public. That's yeah. not doing yeah. your job. That's no. uh, it's terrible. It's, yeah, yeah, it is. It's ridiculous. I mean, it just my heart goes I mean, out to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's just it's been tough. I do. I as it's soon all, as you hang up the phone with me, <laughs> you know, as soon as you hang up the phone with me, I want you to go email Kevin and let him okay, know about my name's this. Amy, so if you want to tell him that, like, if you want to, if you can, like, let him know that, that I'll be, co- like, emailing him. Amy from Washington. That's exactly mm-hmm. what I'll tell him. I'll send him a little uh, note right now to his Skype that says Amy from <laughs> Amy. Washington. Yeah. Amy from Washington. Do you want me to leave my number? Uh, no, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really that 
that well in touch with him on a daily basis. You know, I don't talk with him on a daily basis, so okay. I don't know how long it would be until I get. But the quickest way for you to get a hold of him, because I know he checks his email that, daily, is to. Kevin uh, at Master, Master of Everything. Master, or Master of Many. Master of Many Things. Dot com. Things. Okay, got it. Yeah. I got it. Kevin at okay. Master of Many Things. Dot com. Okay, I'll take pictures and show him my. Uh, and he's on YouTube. He's on Twitter. He's on Facebook. You can probably get a hold of him pretty quick on Facebook. I know, and on Twitter, I know he tweets constantly, daily, daily, really? daily. So, really? yeah, just okay. look up Master Many Things on Twitter if you got Twitter, and that'd be a quick way to get a hold of him too. Yeah, I do. Okay, I will. Thanks for calling my show, though, and I'm glad I you know, was able to talk to you. And uh, I hope, uh, I no, hope I things, helped. I hope things happen for you, girl. I really do. I hope. No, me too. I was in a really bad accident two years ago, so I'm recovering from that still. So. I was permanently disabled two years ago, so oh my I was hit by a, I was walking, taking on the photographer, and I was taking pictures down on the beach, down on the beach, and a rogue wave came up, and it had a thirty-foot tree in, and totally Holy shattered shit. my right, shattered my right leg, and fell off. Wow. I had my first surgery was eight hours to save my right leg, and then I have had seven since, and then I finally had to fuse it, and now I can't. I'll never run again, or so even like, like Max, like even things they needed to me, they like still takes me back. You know? Yeah. Wow. Like I don't go to church because I don't believe in church people. I do. I'm a Christian, but I, I have no trust in anybody that's in the church at all. None. And my parents have like said, "Oh, you know, go to church," and I just have to tell them I can't because I can't trust. I there's no way. Not after something like that happens to you. How are you going to, you know? No, you can't. Right. No, because they just beat, like, religion into you and, oh, this is of God and this, you know, God gives children licks. That's what they called them, licks. And they used to put a piece of wood in the microwave and then they'd whack you with it. It was called a lick. And you used to get, like, ten at a time. With your pants down in front of people on your bare ass and they would just beat you. With it. That's just sadistic. Yeah. Yeah, the lady, there's a Miss Shipman. Her name needs to be out there, too. And Miss Lori Maynard, she was the total. She was the one that she'd sit there and laugh as you got them. This big, fat lady, like, huge, like, 400 pounds. Like, she would just sit there and laugh. It, it disgusts you me. Hit and hit. No, it is. It's, it's sick. I promise you, Kevin will sit down with you and record an interview with you and air it, and this is all going to come together, man. This is all going to come together. Because when Kevin gets behind something, it's a lot more than just the master many things. There's there's yeah. people in his pocket that uh, that will get things done. So Good. some attention will be brought to this, I promise. So. Okay. I will email him, I promise. All right, girl. Have a good night and have a good holiday tomorrow. Spend some time with your family. Make some lovely memories. I will. I promise. Peace, kid. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, again, oh, sorry about that. Uh, Again, to Jim, thanks for the kind words. And to Amy, um, just, uh, you know, it, it keeps that fire going. Mac Ford. If you didn't listen to the radio show and you haven't seen the Facebook page, uh, post and if you haven't heard yet, I'm going to say it again. I will not rest until you and everybody that helped you cover up these atrocities are in jail. Um, for everybody else, much love, many thanks, and I hope that that lady's testimony will spur you into action. We need help with finding information that isn't easily obtainable. We need to connect, clearly connect the dots from Mac Ford to the law enforcement to the politicians. Uh, in a couple of days, I'll be chatting with a couple of other survivors. We have a few other vi- ideas and avenues. And within the coming week, I will put a post on my blog to update the situation. Um, I want also everybody to be as brave as Amy was and some of the other survivors are. It's time to stand up and speak. For decades, fear has kept you silent. And there's big bad wolves out there. I know that. 
But Mr. Ford, welcome to the internet. Much love. Many thanks. You've got to put your body upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make...